it's interesting because I feel like most of the time people who are have usually have kind of opposing strengths often connect with one another best because they're not fighting for that spot. You guys, this episode was so much fun to record with my business partner, Shalane Carter. I know you're going to get so much out of it. Just a little life update. As I am recording this intro, we are trying to furiously and frantically get ready to go to Arizona for a family reunion. My husband's family, they most of them live in Alabama, but a couple of them live also in Bisbee. So we're kind of finding this happy medium. It's not really happy medium in terms of like geographically on the United States map, but it's much easier for them to fly into Phoenix from Alabama than it is to go to Bisbee. So long story short, we're going to Phoenix, Arizona this weekend for our family reunion. And I was thinking in my mind, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll record this little life update in the morning. It'll be no big, no big thing. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, Mackenzie, now that you have a baby, there's no such thing as just like quickly recording something in the morning. So lesson learned on top of leaving for a trip and doing the those last minute packing. It's not a good idea to try to squeeze something like this in. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. I haven't seen some of his, he has three sisters, so it's quite a large family and I haven't seen the sisters or their children in a while. And best part is that my son, Finn, who's about to be four months old, his cousin, Gene, is only two weeks older than him. So it's so sweet that he has a cousin that's kind of close to him in age. I know at four months, they probably they probably won't even realize that they're meeting other people, but someday I hope that they realize like how cool it is to have a cousin so close in age. And then when I come back from Phoenix, Arizona, I'm, I'm returning, we're clipping the trip just a little bit short because my teacher, Johnny Kest, is actually coming to Las Vegas for the first time ever. He has never come here and I'm so excited to take his class again. It's always nice to be in the space and in the presence and proximity of your teacher. So I'll be taking his class next Tuesday. I'm really looking forward to that. The true story submission for today, everybody, is actually from our guest, Shalane Carter. She has submitted this pretty amazing story. I feel like a lot of us can relate to a situation like this. So I'm going to give it a read. She said, one of my favorite stories as a teacher that I'm sure a lot of you can relate to is having someone complain about some part of your class. To set the stage, this class was really well attended and consistent with lots of regulars in it. This new, older gentleman shows up, but clearly looks like he's a professional in the yoga world. He is donning his patterned leggings, he has a tank top on with some kind of yoga phrase, and is prepping for class by doing headstands nonchalantly. I didn't get a chance to approach him before class, but he seemed seasoned and was conversing with some of the other members who seemed to know him by name, so I figured he had attended this style of class before. Now, this particular vinyasa style is a little more power-focused. My teacher during trainings literally said, teach the sequence, then crank the volume and let them flow. It has freestyle mo moments as well as more current style of music. So I began this class and instruct everyone to find child's pose or some place where they can feel comfortable. After a few moments of silence, I start to instruct their breathing and slowly start to fade in a soft, gentle tune. After walking them through some cat and cows and spinal warm-ups, I began the part where they start to move through some of the shapes on their own for about one song. This is the moment where the music gets turned up a little bit and the students start to move on their own. However, as soon as I turn up the volume, he whipped around to look and find where I was in the room, only to start to mime movements and mouth words in my direction. He continues to flail his arms in the air and points at his ears. He kept mouthing, it's too loud, it's too loud. So I looked at the volume on my phone and the volume on the media player, and this was definitely not loud. I gave him a little bit of a nod to acknowledge him and say non-verbally that I had heard him. I turned it down one click and carried on with my class. The gentleman continued. Every time we would move into freestyle and the volume would get turned up, he would flail his arms like a child, throwing a temper tantrum. He stayed throughout the entire class, but made a beeline out of there as soon as I opened the doors. 
I wanted to touch base with him so I could clarify that this was typical of this style. And maybe he just hadn't practiced this style before so that if he went to another class, he wouldn't be alarmed at the same sound and volume. I also think he was trying not to have this conversation because he left so quickly that he left his yoga tank tank top on the floor. I started the conversation by saying, hey, I'm sorry if the volume was too loud for you, but this style typically does have a little more modern and free flow movements where the volume gets turned up. He turned to me and said, he's done yoga all over the world for the past 20 years, and he's never been in a class that had volume this loud. But then he proceeded to say that it was a really great class. <laughs> So I thanked him for the compliment, returned his shirt, and we chatted for a bit. But I will never forget the flailing arms in the middle of class because of one person's opinion of the volume. Moral of the story is you're never going to please everyone. All 20 years of their practice. Do all things with love and you'll leave with good karma, even if it upsets others. What a great true story submission. Thank you to Shalane. And I'm so excited for you to hear much more from her within this episode. If you yourself would like to submit a true story, it's really simple. All you have to do is either head to my Instagram, master your yoga teaching and type true story, two words on any comment, or you can DM me true story or even reply to a story. Um, and I'll walk you through that full process. It's really simple. Or if that sounds altogether too intimidating to head to Instagram, it's also the link is in the show notes. So check it out below. It says submit a true story. I would love to hear from you and potentially feature your true story on one of the upcoming episodes. In today's chat with Shalane, we dive into everything Rachaka retreats. Here's what you can expect within this episode. We tell you the story behind us becoming business partners and creating Rachaka Retreats. What makes Rachaka Retreats unique? Costa Rica recap and examples of how to plan an unforgettable and cohesive retreat experience. The one book that every yoga teacher needs to read. Four Pillars of Dharma how to find your life's purpose if you can't seem to identify it, the defining differences between someone who's living their dharma and someone who's not, hands down the hardest part to living on purpose, the secret to a successful, happy life, what our retreat goers are saying about our retreats, and how you can join us in Tulum. And don't forget that at the end of today's episode, I will be announcing the three winners of the review raffle. Stay tuned all the way to the end to see if you are about to win a hundred bucks. I'm so excited for you to hear this episode. Let's dive in. Hey yogis, Mackenzie Fly here, mom, yogapreneur, teacher trainer, retreat leader, and your guide to master your yoga teaching. This podcast is your weekly dose of actionable wisdom and candid chats with industry experts. Learn to connect deeper, weave yogic magic, and lead by example. Full disclosure, I'm still mastering it too, but together we'll skyrocket your impact and income. Hit subscribe and let's grow one episode at a time. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to MYYT, where you are learning to level up your yoga teaching one masterful class at a time. I am so excited for today's chat with a dear, dear friend and basically my work wife. <laughs> We spent a ton of time together and I just absolutely adore her and it's amazing to have her on the podcast. We've got so much to kind of share with you today, but just a little bit about her. Shalane Carter, the one, the only, is a healer. She's a business mentor and a mom. Starting her own business in the cosmetology world about 11 years ago, she realized her gift with people. So true. And over the years, the ways in which she used her gifts shifted into what now she teaches is the energy of business 
and she utilizes the energetic body healing and the chakra system, regulating the nervous system and liberating you from limiting stories and leaning into your natural talents to help you build a business that's aligned with your unique energetic blueprint. When she's not helping others in business, she's teaching yoga, traveling at a kid's sports game, or sipping coffee in between hands in her kitchen. That is so true. Well, thank also, you so much, Shalane, for hopping on the podcast. We are so thrilled to have you. I'm excited. This feels like a very full circle moment. Mackenzie will tell you a little bit kind of our, our backstory, but um, it feels like kind of this like nice ribbon to be here on the podcast and touching base with all of your yoga teachers who are really starting to master their, their yoga teaching. Yeah, it really does feel full circle. I love that imagery and it, it really is so true. And I'm a walking billboard and living testament to some of Shalane's work. I we we have a kind of a long history and a long story of, of working and being near each other, but one of the real influences that she had on me was kind of helping me start to utilize yoga teaching as more of a, a business. And so I really did kind of go through all of her business strategy and can say that there is some work for all of us to do when it comes to the energy of business. And I feel like it's a really unique aspect that's not talked about that often. And so you just bring a really um, important piece of the puzzle that a lot of people, I, I encourage you to take like a deeper look at it because we don't realize how much of it is subconscious and how much of it is um, energy beneath some of these things that kind of hold you back, especially when we're talking in terms of business. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's a really great way to put it, actually. Like, it's interesting. It, it's in yoga, which I'm sure, you know, all of you will have attest to kind of this, this idea that the micro represents the macro and like vice versa. So kind of when I'm looking at things, it's kind of that same thing of what's happening within yourself that you're then pouring into your business without even realizing it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, today I specifically wanted to feature and have you on the podcast today so that we could talk about Rachaka Retreats. This is actually, yeah, a company that Shalane and I started. It's a, a wellness company that plans, designs, hosts, and facilitates international yoga retreats. And we have a lot to tell you about it because it has become, it's become so much more than I think we not necessarily intended, but it's just become so much more in the best of ways. I feel like intended, like more than we intended is actually a great way to put it. Cause we were like, we were like, okay, how do we take like our love for yoga? How do we take that and actually make it so we can like do something more? Like we want to travel. We want to talk about some of these like deep conversations. Like how do we do that? And we were like, aha, retreats. And now it's just like evolved. Yeah. Well, actually, I want to hear it from your perspective. I feel like it'd be a fun treat for me to to hear how it kind of came into creation, how it came into form. But where, how did Rachaka Retreats form? Where did we start? We started from the bottom and now we're here. What has, <laughs> that, what, yeah. <laughs> what has that kind of journey looked like from your perspective? Um, well, I feel like from my perspective, I took yoga teacher training from Mackenzie years ago. And I remember, and I've told her this before, there was like a moment where I was sitting there. So part of like what I do and part of my practice is I'm, I um, have, I'm psychic, you know, see dead people sometimes, all that jazz. And so had a moment where I'm sitting next to her and I don't know, I don't, you might've been like one person down and all of a sudden it like dropped into my mind. I was like, Mackenzie will, this person will be important in your life. And, you know, when you're just going through yoga teacher training, like at this point, she's just my teacher. Like we really don't have a friendship, not that we were friendly and friends, but it's, it's not like it is now. And, um, to kind of have that, it just seemed a little off. Um, so I just kind of like, you know, oh, okay, cool. Like I, I thought that this was just something maybe I was thinking or hoping or whatever. Um, and then fast forward, we were sharing a lot on social media, like different books that we were reading. Um, and we kind of maintained this friendship post yoga teacher training. And then we're like, well, we are, we're reading all the same books. And so then we decide that we're going to do a book club because we can't be the only two people that want to talk about these like metaphysical books and like all of this stuff and like have these like really great, we would sit here and like 
message back and forth about these like aha moments. We're like, ah, we should get people in on this. We sound so nerdy. <laughs> we are nerdy. So just so you guys know, like we love to like get really geeky on like certain stuff. So anything yoga, we can geek out over for long periods of time. Yeah. And we were like, okay, we we're both like teaching yoga at this point. We we're like, well, again, like let's do this book club. So people started coming and it was kind of like hit or miss that they loved like the conversation, but it was almost like people would come together and you and I would be like, great, let's just dive into like soul searching deep shit. And they were like, on a Tuesday? Hmm, I don't know. It like took them a while to like crack open the shells. Um, I felt like some people were like, finally, like good, I can have some of these conversations. We were like, how do we, and then it kind of came to us. We we're like, well, we want to kind of do this, but like in a bigger way. And I think having us as facilitators to open up those conversations um, is really kind of the way to go because we're very comfortable in that space of like, really like, let's, let's get into, you know, soul contracts and let's get into why we're here. And, you know, let's talk about all these like big concepts, um, but make it practical and applicable to your life. And, so then we were like, well, how about a retreat? And we we hosted our first one. We're like, well, give it a go. It was like, well, we'll do a little trial run. You know, we'll go to Sedona. It's only a couple hours away. Big hit, big hit, sold out. And we were like, I think we're onto something. So then it kind of evolved from there to, to other retreats and a festival and merchandise that's come in and, and have kind of been sold t-shirts, crop tops, all the, that jazz. So, I mean, all from a book club, you guys. Dream big. <laughs> Dream big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it has been such a beautiful journey and one of a lot of um, evolutions and reiterations of itself. And for all the yoga teachers that are out there, I think this is kind of an important thing. When you are embarking on either starting a business or finding a business partner, I joked at the beginning that she's my work wife. It really is like a whole other marriage. And it's yeah, important. I mean, really, I like, I need to communicate something with you and I don't want it to hurt your feelings. Yeah. Yeah. And you really, <laughs> you really do need these periods and pockets in the development of that relationship that feels a little bit like dating. Cause I fondly think back about the book club era as like, we're just testing each other out. We're kind of seeing how one another works and, and how we communicate with one another. And, and from there it was like an engagement period. And then we kind of went, we went full throttle for it. <laughs> True with Retraga retreats. So I really encourage you, if you're thinking about finding a business partner, try like, maybe don't go for the big shebang right out of the gate. Try a couple of other smaller options because it is challenging, just like a, a marriage is kind of challenging. It comes with a lot of vulnerability to express some ideas. And then it takes a lot of communication skills like Shalane is speaking to, to say, hey, I noticed that this is working. Hey, this, this is not working. And to have that sort of open channel of dialogue and communication and to be receptive to feedback always, oh my gosh, um, yeah. I think yeah, I think that's been really key in kind of our our development. And I just, just wanted to say that because I know a lot of yoga teachers that are listening are like, oh, I, I feel like I might want to do something similar of just creating something else beyond the yoga studio. Um, and yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't always, you know, it doesn't yeah. always, I don't want to be like sad, but sometimes it doesn't work out because of the, no. the partnership. Yeah. And, and it's really like, it's interesting. I've done things with other people um, and it... It has to work on so many levels when you're wanting to do things. So even doing something like doing a workshop together with somebody or co-facilitating a class tells you a lot about how somebody plans, how somebody organizes, how somebody handles a disgruntled customer, like somebody who's upset with the purchase or complaining or wants a refund or um, building the thing out, like ideas and stuff like that, because it's like, it has to be a give and take of of both hearing each other and also being heard. Um, and sometimes just in relationships in general, this is how like, again, when we talk about like toxic relationships, getting into stuff like that, of like noticing that, do you feel the same way in the partnership in your business that you might feel in relationships or friendships and, you know, not trying to create the same theme or the same, uh, reiterate the same issues that you're already having. So um, it's key to just try it out. Like nothing's forever, you can always, get divorced and dissolve the partnership, the end, you know, so try a workshop, try a workshop, like 
make it easy, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I love that you kind of spoke to all the things that Rachaka has kind of already done. It has been, I mean, when I think back, I'm like, we were, we were crazy. We were a little bit overexcited. Ambitious. Ambitious is a a really good word to describe it. We launched, I guess, Rachaka retreats at the beginning of, was it 2022? Mm -hmm. And we did one retreat in the spring in Sedona and then the one in the fall was in Las Vegas, which is actually where Shalene and I live. Then in 2023, we hosted three retreats, one in Costa Rica, one in California. And then we went back to Sedona because it was just such a in-demand location. Um, yoga retreats are just so nice in Sedona. It's so energetically charged. But then to top it all off, we also hosted the Rachaka Yoga Fest in Las Vegas. So a huge festival that had vendors, that had different teachers, day long, or three day long events from from dusk until dawn. Yeah, or literally, I guess, we were there at around. sunrise and like after the sunset. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty amazing, but um, I, I can't even believe all that we've done, and we have so many plans for the future and ways in which that it's still even going to shift and morph and grow. So again, can't cannot reiterate enough how just keep following what interests you and keep leaning into one another's strengths. Um, and find a partner that kind of like checks and balances those strengths too. Mm-hmm. Cause we all, we all come to the table with things that we do well. And also we have blind spots, all of us. So it's important to surround yourself with people, but mostly importantly in a, in a partnership with somebody who can, who can help you stay in the right lane. <laughs> yeah. And just like compliment, just like, you know, you don't want, it's interesting because I feel like most of the time people who are, have usually have kind of opposing strengths often connect with one another best because they're not fighting for that spot. Say you want to host a workshop with somebody, one person can be really great and maybe like music that's really meaningful and like they totally get like how to create this like epic playlist and the other person's like, hey, I have this killer sequence to like put with it. Why don't we do something like this? I feel like this would go really well with this song because of some of these lyrics. And, um, you know, so it's like finding people that you, you both can shine, you Mm -hmm. know, and it's not necessarily a competition too, which I I think sometimes when you're doing the same thing, I, I find that that's usually where most people find the pitfall is that they find Mm -hmm. a partner that, that they, they feel like they're competing with rather than they're both amplifying one another. Yeah. Absolutely. And let it have more of that collaborative energy. Um, yeah. It's it's so, so key. And something that Shalane and I have been talking about in terms of the evolution and where is Rachaka going next, not just with retreats. We actually were thinking about maybe even creating something for yoga teachers who are interested in taking their teaching career to the next level as far as hosting retreats. Because with Rachaka, we have already built a six-figure business in, in less than two years. And it came from, we, we knew we were on the right track, like Shalane said, right out of the gate with Sedona. It sold out in what? I mean, how many, how many the, days? The I first think? one, yeah, it was all of like 10 days and it was sold yeah. out. Yeah, and two weeks. Yeah, just wild. Like our our Costa Rica one, again, like we sold it twice. Basically we sold it to, I think two or three people had to drop out. It was like medical something, like time off work, whatever it was. We have basically sold out our retreats, had people drop out for personal reasons, put filled it back again. like. We've sold them multiple times over, so we're mm-hmm. we're really excited about what's to come to teach you how to do those similar um, systems within yeah. your business if you're wanting to do those things. Yeah, and just want to share because it is such a fulfilling. I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Shalane, but I know how much you get out of hosting retreats. It's so fulfilling as a yoga teacher to create that space. And I'm so lucky because back to your sort of macro micro thing, Shalane, Shalane is like the visionary for us. She's like that big picture person. Um, and I, I tease her. I'm, I'm sometimes like, Shalane, like you're such a visionary that you're like, hop on the, the motorbike and you go from like zero to 60. And sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, wait a second, let me get my helmet, girl. Like, wait for me. <laughs> She's, she's so, such, such a big picture person, which we need, you know, to have that, that vision of the future. And I'm a little bit more of the micro, like I want to 
go through everything with a fine tooth comb. And I really appreciate like the detail side of stuff. Um, and it just, it does sort of complement complement each other in that regard, or at least I hope you feel that way, Shalane. Yeah. Eventually we're both going the speed limit. I go, want to go a hundred over. She wants to go like 25 under and we like meet in the middle. 75. <laughs> Eventually we're both on the motorbike. We have our helmets on. We're like, okay, let's go. <laughs> that is so funny. So you guys, we just really wanted to give you a taste into what a Rechaka retreat is like and kind of recap one of the retreats that we did in Costa Rica. What really makes Rechaka retreats stand out, at least to me, is that our retreats are designed with honestly like one concept in mind and one sort of philosophical teaching or one meaningful message at the heart that then everything that you do on the retreat is organized around. The, the theme of the retreat is, and that theme is always different depending upon where we are. We, we put it, we consider the location and then also we enhance it. And I think this is where the book club element gets pulled through is we always like to support the theme and the retreat with a recommended reading so that it's encouraging people. <laughs> Why so nerdy of us. So nerdy, so nerdy of us. Oh my gosh. So, but really, we, we want to encourage people to continue growing and to continue seeking truth. Um, and some of these books that we recommend, we hope um, guide people to that. What do you think, Shalane? Yeah, I, I, I love that. We're like, and we pick a book. Also, I think that is really beneficial because when people go on a retreat, they have a lot of downtime. Mm -hmm. And so they, I, several of them have been like, oh, I've been reading this. Like, I'm going to finish this on the retreat. So I, I think it also gives people this opportunity to like have a good excuse to really take time for themselves to do some self-discovery. And so some of the, I think the theming that we always kind of aim is that you leave the retreat more like yourself. You leave the retreat with less, less baggage, less bullshit, less stories, less um, you know, whatever it is, and you really come back as more because mm -hmm. of it. I feel like that's part of the reason that we do this is that we're not really interested in being like a yoga on the beach and then chug three margaritas and then get sunburnt and like not make it back for sound bath type of retreats. And not that there's anything wrong with those types where you just show up, you do yoga in the morning, and then you do whatever during the whole day. But ours we always want it to be some very experiential and kind of like Mackenzie was saying, like being really methodical and thoughtful about the entire experience, not just showing up for a tropical yoga class. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's one of those things too, when, you know, as yoga teachers, when you're creating anything, whether it be a yoga class, a retreat, a workshop to be mindful of the ripple effect, how does this then track again? Here's my like, we're going to talk five years down the road, but like, how does this track to where I actually want to be? Does this support those things? And like, mm -hmm. we want people in our community that want to have these deep conversations that are interested in really seeking their own truth, that are interested in like peeling back these layers um, and being the most authentic person that they can be. And so I think that's part of, part of what also makes us unique is that, that element that it's, it goes beyond just having a concept so much as it is an experiential transformation too. Absolutely. And I think the book is just another way that we make yoga more than just a practice within the four corners of a yoga mat. And the book gives us this lens to look through and say, hey, in what ways am I living? Are they in, like Shalane is saying, are they in alignment with where I want to go? And if they're not, are there other tools that I could use to recalibrate <laughs> to the trajectory that I'm actually meaning to go and wanting to go? And so that's how that's how Shalane and I really consider a yoga practice. It's a lot more of an art of living, a way of living than this moving and breathing thing that you do on the mat. It's not to say like that is that is yoga, but it's just like one small piece of yoga that usually just helps you get to those deeper deeper layers in those deeper realms. You really say like the asana practice or the physical yoga is like the gateway drug. <laughs> it's like that entry point for people where they start to get a taste of what the essence of yoga and what actually, what yoga feels like as a sensation, as an experience, 
not just yoga as a class. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just so nice. I mean, a lot of people are kind of interested in yoga teacher training, even if they have no desire to necessarily teach yoga, they want to go through the process for the self-development and the transformation and growth. And the way we design our retreats give you a hint of that give you a taste of the YTT experience because we we talk about some of these these more concepts not necessarily in like a boring sit down lecture sort of energy and environment but just in like opening opening up the floor to say hey here's this concept what do you think about it and and let people kind of like mull things over i think if unless you're you're in a yoga teacher training we're not often given that opportunity and it's the most amazing thing to see. We've seen so many people just be like, I don't know, you can almost see, you can just see. Yeah, like at first there's like this like sheet that they, it's like on, on, um, on the Wizard of Oz when they want to like peek behind the curtain type of feel. They're like, can I say it? Can I share it? Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. It, like you can just see this moment of insight or see like the dots connecting or like things things clicking. And it's it's really, really cool to just be in a space where you're in a circle with other people who have the same intention. Like they they wanna they want to experience some healing. Um, mm -hmm. And you're in a vulnerable space. You're kind of sharing some things that you probably wouldn't normally unless you were being poked and poked and prodded by me and Shalane <laughs> to do so. But on that other side of the vulnerability, like on just on the other side of that discomfort, is that like love and belonging, that sense of inclusion and that sense of um, just, I don't know, like goodness that we all are really wanting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, concur. I concur. So with Ignite Your Light, that was our Costa Rica retreat that we facilitated at the beginning of 2023. It already feels like so long ago, so many things have happened. Mm -hmm. I know it's wild. It is wild, you guys. Like I was like, is this when they say time is an illusion? Is that what this is? What they're talking about? <laughs> oh, it holds a sweet place in my heart because that's actually when I announced that I was pregnant for the first time. Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, was, was it. <laughs> I know I was 15 weeks pregnant. I think during this retreat, mm -hmm. and I, I was the, the circle of women that came on the retreat were some of the first people to know. And now I'm three months postpartum. So said baby, who was just a tiny little thing, still growing in the womb, is now out in the world. So I will always think back to our time in Costa Rica and and just thinking of where I was in the pregnancy. It's just so sweet. Yeah, I was. And just even kind of, uh, it is really fascinating, like things like that. I think people feel safe to share, safe to, it, everybody has said it is so interesting that within one day, two days, I feel like I know these people better than some of my friends. Mm -hmm. and I, I think even Mackenzie saying, you know, like this, you know, announcing a pregnancy is always really sensitive and feeling like she could share with these people who she's their teacher, she's their facilitator, she's supposed to be in charge and, and be able to kind of let those doors down or those walls down is a really good indicator of the type of container that we always uh, aim to uphold. Mm -hmm. um, they were all so receptive and so supportive. And I think when you mentioned we are looking for the type of people who want to have these deep conversations, Maybe it's in the messaging or the way that you and I talk, but that's the people that always show up. Yeah. And I am always so touched with how kind the, it's usually, it's it's more often women than men, but our, our first couple of retreats, we had a, a handful of men that came too. So I don't want anyone listening to this thinking that it's only exclusively women, but the people that then do come on these retreats are just absolutely incredible and amazing. Yeah. And the Ignite Your Light in particular, our theme for this retreat was on Dharma, which a lot of you being yoga teachers probably know is kind of the yogic word or concept for your life's purpose, your life's work. And the book that we used to support this theme was The um, Great Work of Your Life. This is a text by Stephen Cope. It's basically a more accessible version to some people, um, or it's really inspired by the Bhagavad Gita, 
which is such a, a classic text for all yoga teachers to spend time with. If you haven't read the Bhagavad Gita as a yoga teacher, you have a real responsibility to, to go check that text, but then to help enhance your understanding of it, the Great Work of Your Life book is absolutely amazing for kind of bringing some of these bigger concepts to be a little more accessible. And I feel like he does a really, really great job is breaking it down into four different pillars. And so the first one that he kind of talks about is called look to your dharma. So when you think about dharma, a lot of, most people will say like your job or your career or something like that. But I love in this book, he even breaks it down further that it can, it's going to morph throughout your whole life. So if you're meant to be kind of this caretaker, this nurturer, um, it might start off with you being a nurse. And then it might morph into being a mother. And then it could transform into you maybe taking care of your parents or maybe you're, uh, you know, you get a job at a school being a nurse and, and really taking care of kids or even doing some type of counseling or something like that. So, you know, this particular one, he's like, look to something that is, um, th instead of thinking so, so large, right? It has to be this great thing that to look a little bit smaller. So he makes things like very, very digestible. Mm -hmm. um, and even like, again, call of the times, if, if you were like, hey, I'm a nurse or, hey, I'm interested in kind of some of these things I've always been into. I mean, even myself, like holistic healing, things like that. Um, I'm very like well-versed in, you know, herbs you should take for this or oils to take for this or, you know, different energy medicine practices. And the call of the times would be if there is a, a, um, war or something like that, where my services would be needed, that could be your purpose. That could be your Dharma at the time. It always kind of morphs and changes. So I think him even using again, the, the Gita as this reference and then actually making it something that you're like, sometimes when people speak in stories, sometimes the stories seem so vast and so maybe conceptual that it's really hard for it to be applicable. And I feel like when he talks about, okay, well, think of yourself as a nurse, think of yourself as a mom, think of yourself as a, you know, a caretaker, like you're like, oh, I could see myself in all of those roles because all of those are very real and present mm -hmm. in our time, you know? 100%. That's really well said. When you're in it, it's much harder to see it. Mm -hmm. um, like think about when you're in a maze it's hard to kind of see which turn is right and which turn is wrong. But when you zoom out a little bit and you have this sort of bird's eye perspective, it's much easier to see how to effectively and efficiently get from point A to point B. I think the question in general, like when somebody asks, look to your dharma, or when somebody says, look to your dharma, which is essentially asking like, what is your life's purpose? That can be such an intimidating question <laughs> because- yeah, it's big. And big, it feels it feels so loaded. So kind of the genius of really the Bhagavad Gita and specifically Mr. Cope in the um, Great Work of Your Life book is he gives you these sort of like subcategories of if you're struggling to figure out, to find what your purpose is on the planet, then there's three things that you can do. You can mm -hmm. bring to mind what are your gifts? What are you naturally talented at? What are the things that people are complimenting or commending you on or coming to you for guidance, those are your gifts and those are the things that you need to trust. And then Shalane said it so beautifully. Oftentimes, it's not this monumental thing. It doesn't have to be big or um, like Instagram famous. It, it can be something small um, and that's still, it's still as important. It still is valuable. And then the last piece of advice that he kind of gives is like, listen for, or listen, yeah, for the call of the times, like what is happening in the world or what is happening in your life that is calling you to respond in a certain way that this might be trying to tell you, hey, your Dharma is this thing because that's presently what you are dealing with, what you are working with. And I think sometimes we deny the situation, right? And then we deny ourselves this opportunity to allow the Dharma to change and the Dharma to shift. Yeah. Well, and I feel like we, even in our society, there's, I love that you brought up like an Instagram influencer. Like there's 
so much value put on being famous, like a Taylor Swift or a, you know, whoever, a Beyonce, a Jennifer Aniston, that like those are glorified dharmas or, you know, even like a Mother Teresa, like that it has to be that big in order to be important. And I think in this book, he's talking about, okay, if we're going to go over the, these four pillars, let's talk about the first one, like keep it simple. What's that acronym? Like keep it simple, stupid. We're not going to use the stupid part today. Keep it, silly. Keep it simple, simple sweetie. Silly. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be all of these things. So basically what we did is we're like, okay, if we're, we're, we're using this as a theme, what we did is kind of first day, like, what are some of your gifts? Like we opened up the floor to really talk about, Hey, what do you think you're good at? What do you think you're, you know, you're, if you could describe like your purpose and we really started to introduce this idea of Dharma and we had so many different people from different walks of life, whether it be, um, high up at a, at a hotel versus a stay at home mom versus somebody who does landscape architects, somebody who, you know, so it's like, it kind of spanned all different genres of, you know, people that were moms that weren't moms that were grandmas that people who had never been married or never had kids. Or when I started to talk about what my purpose was, and I heard all of these other people talk about their purpose, it's like they started to see themselves in other people. Mm -hmm. And you started to see that. And that that's again, when you're talking about how can I make an impact? How can I make a difference? This is why using things like, you know, stories, metaphors, books, things like that to reference that really make it applicable and then actually have them apply it makes such a transformative experience for them because everybody started to see that they weren't the only ones that were experiencing this conflict mm -hmm. of really trying to live a fulfilled life, really trying to find their quote unquote purpose. And so like once we kind of went through that third first pillar, it was kind of easy for us to segue like, okay, the next day, which I, Mackenzie and I try to zip line together often. <laughs> Have you to do it? Okay. There's this, been two instances. Yeah, we've tried to zip line together twice and it has not worked out. Uh, the, se the second pillar that he talks about, it says do it full out. And so like this day to make it applicable, we actually took them on this beautiful like zip line thing. And I just showed Mackenzie all the pictures because she was pregnant and they wouldn't let her go. They would not let me go. I could not zip line because I was pregnant. <sighs> so I missed out on all of, the, all of the actual implementation of doing it full out. But this concept basically means like once you find that thing that lights you up and it doesn't have to be big, once you find that thing, you need to start to do it on purpose. So I think there's like this Dolly Parton quote that's like, find who you find out who you are and then start to do it on purpose. And we were kind of illuminating or maybe foreshadowing is a better word um, for this concept when we were saying like, what are what are the things that you're doing right now in your life? And are they in alignment with kind of where you want to go? So it's calling on you to be a little more cognizant a little more aware and conscious of your actions and start to take disciplined action to change them, especially if they're not in alignment with your dharma or your purpose. So the first piece is kind of like find out who you are and do it on purpose and then start to unify all of your actions, organize all of your life's um, activities in support of that dharma because that's just gonna expedite your process. And that's really like what's so true also of retreats as well. Like when we're talking about healing and like making a, a, real, a real transformation quickly, retreats also facilitate that. Because like Shalane was speaking to, even in the first pillar of look to your dharma, when you're surrounded by other people who are kind of bringing, bringing to the surface like what they're good at and you start to see yourself and their story, it's, it's helping like expedite the process of figuring out what you're here to do on this planet. And then you start to get other ideas from other people of, okay, now that I know what that thing is, like, how can I start to actually apply it and live it in my life and unify? Well, and I think even being on the retreat is something that when you're like, do it full out, most people come to, the, to a retreat or most people are curious because they're like, I need something in my life. Something is missing or I am feeling depleted or whatever it is. So it's really fascinating. This, this particular um, like theme really worked well um, because 
when you're looking to do it full out, you need to be like Mackenzie was saying, putting yourself in those places, like starting to facilitate all of your life to really revolve around what lights you up. That includes the people, the places, the experience, the activities that you do. So for example, I, I feel like this is where a lot of teachers kind of, and Mackenzie and I kind of joke about this. You want to be a really great fucking teacher, teach 6 a.m. Because you know what you gotta do with your life? You gotta organize the night before to be fully prepared and on point by 6 a.m. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and really provide a really great experience. And so her and I joke about this because both of us have taught 6 a.m. for long periods of, of our teaching career. And our life had to shift and change in order to be a great teacher in order to deliver their message. So whether you are, again, like you're a yoga teacher, you maybe went through yoga teacher training and you're not quite sure exactly what you wanna do with it, start to organize your life in such a way that supports you teaching because it's something that lights you up. Mm -hmm. Like, again, make, making it less difficult for yourself by organizing your life. That means like, I, I, I was like, okay, can't, can't watch TV. Got to go to bed early. Like it means sometimes saying no to things so you can say yes to other things. And that is really how you do it full out is when you say no to those things that keep you from being that version of yourself that's leveling up into this person who's doing it full out. Who's like not half ass. They are full ass. They are in it. You know, <laughs> great point. <laughs> The last piece on this pillar here, we're only in the second of, of four pillars, according to this Great Work of Your Life book. The last piece is to practice deliberately, meaning that you're trying to not just show up and be on autopilot or phone it in, that what you're doing, if you found your dharma and if you're trying to do it on purpose and if you're organizing your whole life, to, to help you move down that path, then you need to be practicing in a way that has the intention of being better than the day before. So it's always with the intention of refinement, always with the intention of, of finding that next layer, that deep. I was layer. in, I'm in this class right now with um, Joe Dispenza. So some of you might be familiar because I kind of feel like he weaves a bit into that kind of yogic um, idealism or, and ideas, but he was like, he talks a lot about meditation and teaches a lot about brainwave frequencies and stuff like this. And um, he's like, I sit down to meditation and I do not get up until I'm a different person getting up from my meditation. And that's wow. kind of like practicing deliberately. Like the next day you have refined your cueing, you have, um, you know, fine tuned your theming. You are being more mindful and intentional about what you eat because the yoga of eating can be a mindfulness practice. Um, you speak differently. You react differently. Like that's practicing deliberately that you every single day is getting up from your meditation cushion or whatever, you know, experience that you're in, that you're different every single time you're introduced to that experience again. Yeah. So you guys, this is the kind of stuff that we talk about on our <laughs> chakra retreat. <laughs> this no. is the 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 style. This is the vibe and the energy. So hopefully you're already kind of just getting a taste for it and you're enjoying it. The last two pillars of this book, the great work of your life. Um, after you've looked to your dharma and then you've started to kind of do it full out. The third recommendation that the Bhagavad Gita kind of tells us is that, okay, now that you've done all that, that's the stuff that you can control. Then comes the part that most of us are not so good at <laughs> is the releasing of the control or what, what the pillar is called of let go of your fruits. So like you've, you've already done as much as you can do. Then the next step is to release. And the, the beautiful imagery for this one is like if you're drawing back an arrow on a bow and arrow, you can, you know, pull, pull it back and find that perfect amount of tautness of the arrow. You can take aim. You can do all these things to set yourself up for success. But the second that you release that arrow and it flies, then there are so many conditions externally that you can't do anything about. And so how do we practice more often letting go of the fruits? 
Yeah. Well, and I love that you're like, this is the harder part because most of us want to control and think that it needs to have a certain outcome. And he really he talks about like, instead of if you've done all of this, if you've pulled back the arrow, you've strung it correctly, it's the right environment, there's no fucking wind or whatever else. And you're like, great, here we go. Like you've done all that you can, you've prepared, you've, you've practiced over and over. So like letting go of the fruits is like, once you let go of that arrow, it's gonna land wherever it's gonna land based on your preparation, based on how you practiced deliberately. It's based on how you've continued to align your life for your purpose, whatever that is. And even if you're a yoga teacher, it, again, it could go even deeper. Like this might not be, I mean, there are some people that are so gifted with assists. Yes, they're yoga teachers, but I would say some of their gift is actually their gift of touch. They do it through yoga. And so like when you're, you're letting go of the fruits, this is like sometimes just allowing what you've done to be good enough always no matter what and not not allowing when difficulties start to kind of percolate and and rise so whether this be a coworker, a parent a spouse or partner that has maybe something to say about you going to bed early or you saying no to a, a party so that you can get to bed and get rest for your 6 a.m class say um, that you don't really allow it to deter you. And if somebody or something is starting to kind of chip at this, that you're not distracted by it, that it's okay for those experiences and those like difficulties or those speed bumps, or maybe you kind of get off this, like you stop practicing yoga for a while because you're teaching so much and you lose your personal practice, that it's okay that those things have happened, but we're always just veering back. We're always just veering back. And and um, Mackenzie, I feel like, I can't remember if it was you or, or somebody else. I feel like I know I've heard you say this, but there's, in, in when you're flying an airplane and it programs the, the destination into, you know, the pilot puts it in, it's like, here's where we're gonna go it only actually has to be on course about 10% of the time in order for it to land where it's supposed to land. So it's actually off course about 90% of the time. So it's constantly doing this zigging and zagging back and forth, back and forth, you know, kind of swerving in and out this like weave situation, but it really only has to be about 10% of the time that it's on course in order to land where it needs to land. And so if you're continuing to come back to these things, these practices, even if you quote unquote fall off the wagon, like that's okay. Yeah, that, I love I love that imagery, Shalane. I'm so glad you brought it up. And I think ultimately this pillar of let go of the fruits is, is just trying to tell you that everything in your life has a purpose and can be included. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all happening as it should. It's all happening in the right time. And that even those things that you might label as difficulties or roadblocks or hurdles like Shalane spoke to are for your development yeah. and you can turn those problems into the portals yeah. that take you to the place that you want to go and so one of the the um, subcategories that stephen cope has under this particular pillar is turn the wound into the light um, and that's such a beautiful reminder i know i love that you know what's funny is when when i have whenever i think of that after you know, teaching so many yoga teachers. Um, I can think of two in particular uh, off the top of my head that really came in and really struggled with sharing their voice, really struggled with being loud enough to hear when they would teach, um, thought they were very cringe, like, was that cool? Oh, I don't know if that landed, like really unsure of themselves or having a hard time speaking up. And now both of them teach cl group, group classes in front of all of these people when they were so worried about being able to be heard. So it's interesting that this is, and there's whole, there's, you know, backstories to both of these people of why they had a hard time speaking up for themselves, why they had a hard time being heard, why they were always so soft-spoken. But now, I mean, it, it, it's incredible that when you really look to your dharma, when you really do the thing, you do it on purpose, you let go of the fruits, it allows these experiences that may have been painful to actually be your greatest treasure and gift to people. Because you have an understanding, a wisdom that somebody who's never experienced those things could never relate to. 
Yeah. That's really like, that's lived, like lived wisdom. And it's really only that experience that gives you the platform um, to be able to actually speak to it from a place of direct experience. Yeah. Which is the type of teachers that you want to listen to anyway. Like it's, it's really hard to take advice from somebody who's maybe never been through what you're struggling with. Um, so it all, it all has its place and it's all perfect. And I think the last thing kind of on this little subcategory is that is to not necessarily have any expectations. And there's this one sort of rhyme that really seals the deal or makes this concept make sense for me. It's that be with what's real instead of an ideal. Because sometimes I think we think like, this is my dharma, this is my life's purpose, and we have it all mapped out. <laughs> but that's sometimes an ideal. That's like how we envision things. And that thought then keeps us from being able to notice what's actually happening, what's the real thing. Yeah. And so this principle of let go of the fruits, like let go of your expectations, because maybe the thing that you think should be it is number one, not it, but it's also making you blind to what is right in front of you. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not it for you. So you may see it in somebody else and you're like, oh, I want that or, or I'm, I want to emulate this person or I really enjoy this this part about them. But even like we talked about in partnerships, like Mackenzie and I bring very different things to the table, which is why our partnership worked and continues to work. It's that we are not the same. We are not trying to be each other. And so when you stop putting these people, whether it be a teacher or somebody else on a pedestal or this belief that you have to be this something in order to be really impactful or really great, that particular like subsection really says like you are good enough as is just continue to do this thing of looking to the fruits or looking to the fruits looking to your dharma and letting go of the fruits looking to your dharma letting go of the fruits look you know just over and over yeah it's like lather rinse repeat yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the fourth little um principle according to this book is turn it over to god mm. And this is a deepening of really the third principle, is, is the call to really, truly surrender and realize that kind of none of this was, <laughs> none of this was like yours in the first place. And that the most efficient livers or like um, the most efficient sort of figures, and, and that's one of the brilliance of the books is he brings these principles to life through people's lives, whether they were really influential and historical figures or everyday people. And that their, their dharma becomes just this expression of divinity and love. It's like they're just sort of channeling this gift or they're receiving this gift from something bigger than themselves. That's when it really becomes embodied. Yeah, I always kind of, you know, especially after I've done a lot of like work with somebody, I always, or honestly, after a retreat, I feel the same way. And and I've shared this with Mackenzie before, but I always kind of say, I always feel well used. I always feel mm -hmm. well used. I feel like my gifts have like channeled through my body, my my purpose or my dharma or whatever it is has like moved through me so much and i've given in such a way that is so rewarding as well it, it gives just as much as it takes and it's effortful that you feel well used you feel this like sense of like even if you 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 know are making music and you're not the taylor swift you still feel so great after you got up and you performed a song like it feels like your gift to the world to be able to songwrite and to be able to impact people through your words, through your lyrics or through your yoga teaching, you know, that it's not about this accolade that comes. It's about this sensation or this awareness of feeling fulfilled no matter what. That's so good. And he continues to say that the way, uh, other ways that you can turn it over to God is to walk by faith and to take yourself to zero, which basically means forget yourself in the doing. And uh, yoga in so many ways talks about this. It's like losing of the self, a dying of the ego, where the, the, the art 
or the artist becomes the art, where the singer becomes the song, the dancer becomes the dance, where there's this enmeshment between you and what you're doing, full engagement is what we're all after. Being fully absorbed in something is pure bliss, is pure happiness. When we forget our stories, when we forget our stress, when we forget our self-limiting beliefs, that's when we are the most alive and lit up and what Shalane is talking about, what uses us up, but not in a way that makes us feel depleted, in a way that actually makes us feel really replenished. I love that you just said that. I also love that for those of you who are going on our Tulum retreat, you already, you're, you're going to know what we're talking about this last little bit. <laughs> she dropped a little hint, a little hint of what's yeah. to come. Yeah. So we just wanted to give you a little taste of, of kind of what else you can expect on a Rachaka retreat. Of course, you're going to get the yoga in the morning. And we do all styles of yoga for everybody of every age, of every experience. All, all levels are welcome. That's probably the most common question that we get. It's like, okay, well, how advanced do I have to be? <laughs> and the answer is, you don't ever have to have tried yoga before. We've heard you can people be that have mother. never done yoga before come on our, our yoga retreat. So <laughs> it's yeah. open. So there's that, <laughs> that physical aspect. You're going to get yoga practices, but then you're also going to get meditation. And then we also have sort of these, these Dharma talks or just times that are not necessarily lectures, but just conversations yeah. for us mm -hmm. to delve into the reading. Yeah, kind of like we talked about how we like did, you know, zip lining and really talked about like doing it full out. We really start to marry activities or experiences or um, depending on, on, again, whatever it is, the, the book or whatever it is that inspires us really starts to inform our entire retreat. So at the end of it, I mean, if you felt like you had so many like golden nuggets and like aha moments during this conversation, like this is it for like especially if you go to Tulum with us, this is it for the full week. Like prepare mm -hmm. to have your mind blown. <laughs> yeah. And it gets, it gets a chance to really settle in deep um, and take root in a way that you don't just like go and visit this beautiful destination and be like, oh, I was so inspired when I was there. It actually takes root in your heart and it's something that you can carry home with you. And, and I think that's the biggest testament to me and is literally in our testimonials that we're about to share is, is people say like, I, I was able to come home with actionable steps with these tools that it wasn't just like me escaping to the jungle, but it helped me actually return with more clarity and, and be in more alignment with what I know now is my life's purpose, which is really cool. So Shalane, would you share, go ahead and read one of these yeah. This is in the words of one of our students. Yeah. So this, uh, this retreat was truly magical. I didn't have any expectations and I was really impressed. The resort was incredible and all of the yoga meditation and educational dis and discussion was very high quality and inclusive of all skill levels and beliefs. Everything was very genuine and the courses built on one another in a way that felt very natural and comfortable. Highly recommend the experience. Here's another one. It says, before this retreat, I was wrapped in my emotional and spiritual shell, lamenting many aspects of my life with a stuck mind. On this last full day of the retreat, I feel as if my path is clear, my mind is flexible, and my soul is excited for the present and future. I have rediscovered parts of myself long gone, parts that made me feel whole and alive, while also uncovering dormant aspects I simply did not think I had. I am forever grateful for the love, kind kindness, and vision of not only Shalane and Mackenzie, but of the other women on this trip. Gratitude and humility fills me to think I have been afforded such a special opportunity to grow in a beautiful location with beautiful souls. Um, amazing writer. Uh, it's like we paid this person. Yeah. We did not. We did not. Like we sat. So at the end of our three retreats, we always kind of get together and we have like a, a little session where we're like, what went well, what didn't go well. And we were like practically in tears reading some of these. This one says, I appreciated all the levels of yoga you shared. You approach Your approach was thoughtful and engaging and opened me up to new concepts. The attention to detail from our very first introduction via email registration and throughout the in, the retreat was above and beyond anything I expected. I hope to bring both of my daughters and several friends to the future ones. I know who this is and she did bring both of her daughters and their testimony is very much the same. 
Yeah. And then last one, this one's short. It said, I had an amazing experience. I was able to relax and unwind, to leave work behind and focus on my hurting and healing. That's what it's about, my friends. And that is what is awaiting you on our Rachaka retreat. And we have something so special coming up this April of 2024, if you're listening in real time. So Shalane, can you tell us just a little bit about our Tulum retreat? Yeah, our Tulum retreat is kind of, Mackenzie uh, dropped a little little bit of a hint on the, the last little bit, but this particular retreat is called Recharge. Um, it's really understanding how to actually recharge your own battery so that you're not relying on things like dopamine hits from you know doom scrolling or coffee or whatever it is or that you always necessarily have to to do something and so we're we're gonna talk about like all of these practices and rituals that really enrich your life that you can do every single day to actually make you feel more vibrant more alive more awake and i would even say like age in reverse i might even go that far to say that um <laughs> it's it's we're really excited about this one it's in tulum which is uh, it's a stunning location. This resort is right on the beach. Um, and they all the food is included except for one particular meal where we go out and we support the, the local culture um, and commerce and, and eat out at one of the restaurants uh, there. But we have a whole slew of really fun activities and things like that that go along with this theme. Yeah. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to Retreats. R-E-C-H-A-K-A, retreats, R-E-T-R-E-A-T-S, dot com forward slash Tulum, T-U-L-U-M. And just for listening, as a special thank you for being a part of the M-Y-Y-T community, you can use the code M-Y-Y-T at checkout for a special 10% off discount. And you're going to want to do this quickly, you guys, because our rooms are selling all the time. Just the other day, um, one of our nicest rooms, like the most deluxe yeah. room, we're talking like open the door and you're basically yeah. on the beach yeah. on the ocean. <laughs> Um, that one just sold the other day. We're about halfway sold out and just about six or so weeks away at the time of this recording. Um, so it's coming up quick and we want you to come with us. So make sure you take advantage of that special discount code. And you can also check out the link in the show notes just in case that came at you too quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this one. It's, I mean, we love all of our retreats, but it's always fun to, um, this one's a little bit longer than, than some of the others, which I feel like just makes it a little extra juicy. Um, and the, the Tulum area, the Mayan culture is really, really fascinating. It's such a beautiful culture. So I'm really, really pumped for that. Amazing. So thank you so much, Shalane, for coming on the podcast. And everybody who is listening, if this resonated with you, if you've had any any strokes of insight or got any wisdom from the episodes, if you would please take a screenshot and share it to your social media. Um, up on your Instagram stories, don't forget to tag both at Master Your Yoga Teaching as well as at Rachaka Retreats um, so that we can reshare it. And then Shalane, if you would, please tell us a little bit about how all of the people listening can find you and get more plugged into all the awesome stuff that you offer. Yeah, I'd love to have you in my Instagram community. Um, it's at Shalane underscore Carter, S-H-A-L-A-N-E underscore Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R. Um, and then I'd also like to give all of your listeners a little free, um, I, I call it my energy espresso guide, um, it, to five practices to raise your vibe in five. So really, really simple, like energy practices, um, meditation, things like that for you. Um, and it's free. So I'm going to give it to, to all you guys as well. Awesome. We'll make sure to drop that in the show notes. So take advantage of all the things, you guys. And thank you again for coming back each and every week for your, your dose of wisdom. And now the moment that you've been waiting for, the three winners of the review raffle are, drum roll please, Breezy Rodriguez. Dara Newman, and Megan Bateman. Congratulations. And thank you to everybody for taking the time to submit a five-star rating and review of the show. I am so, so grateful and excited to send Breezy, Dara, and Megan a hundred bucks coming your way. Until next time, namaste blessed.
Thanks for listening. If this is your first time, peruse our feed to see if there's something else that will serve you. We're so grateful that you're here and invite you to join our inner circle by subscribing to our newsletter. If this episode resonated with you, help us spread the word by sending it to a friend who needs to hear this message. Likes, follows, sends, shares, and reviews help us to continue delivering high quality content to you for free each and every week. Don't forget to tag at master your yoga teaching so we can reshare. I am a certified yogi. However, this podcast is intended for information and entertainment only. If you are interested in mentorship or coaching with me, check out the website linked in the show notes to get more information. This content and other content produced by CLW Studios and affiliated partners is not therapy, and nothing in this content indicates a therapeutic relationship. Any opinions of guests on the podcast are their own and do not represent the opinions of Mackenzie or CLW Studios. Learn more about Mackenzie, her guests, and CLW Studios by following the links in the show notes. Keep shining, and we will see you next Wednesday for another dose of Master Your Yoga Teaching. Namaste blessed.